Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the 2023 National Signing Day for the University of Arkansas at Monticello. Really happy that everyone could join us for this very, very special day. We're really excited uh, about this signing class. Um, we have um, a number of young men uh, that are going to become part of, of our football program, uh, our great university, and our community. Um, and we couldn't be more happier with the the makeup of this group. Uh, just good, good people, uh, come from great families, great high schools, um, several different states. Uh, I will tell you that when we um, uh, have the release on our website, uh, Ryan Tao has done a tremendous job for us. There'll be some information there that you can go to um, that'll have all of our guys listed. Um, and obviously, uh, you'll see here in a second um, how that's going to work. We, we believe that we, we try to do it the right way and, and, and do everybody justice in this process because it is a special day. Uh, I do want to say this, that, you know, the weather, not only here in Monticello, but, you know, throughout several states that we have young men signing today, that have signed today. Unfortunately, some of their signing day uh, celebrations uh, will have to be postponed because uh, several are out of school. Um, and uh, they won't be able to do it till tomorrow. Uh, but the uh, NLIs, um, grant and aids are all in, so that gives us uh, the ability to talk about each one uh, of these uh, new bowl weevils that we have for UAM. Uh, there's a couple things I want to start off with and, and talk about. You know, there was um, a different way that we've been doing our visits uh, this year. Actually, we've done it for the last couple of years, and we found that it's been very, very productive for us. Uh, I will say that the camps that we've had here in the past couple of years, well, where we're traveling and doing camps, obviously having them here on our campus as well, uh, have been really, really good for us. We've been able to evaluate a lot of uh, potential student athletes. Uh, that has given us a, uh, just a great way to evaluate uh, talent uh, and find guys that might be interested in, in attending UAM and. Because of that, when we start bringing guys in, um, you know, we, we, we had a total of around 60 that we brought in for official visits, and we, we did it every day. Uh, our coaches did a tremendous job with this. Um, when you do it every day, there's not much of a break. We're really heavy getting out, uh, recruiting, you know, back in November, December. Once we get to January, because we have uh, these student athletes coming in uh, to Monticello and on our campus, um, our coach is not able to get out as much. Um, you know, as, as you know, uh, our, our coaches, they, they do a lot. Um, the recruiting part of it, you know, we have our coaches that teach classes during the spring semester as well. Uh, and, and obviously, they're doing other things uh, responsibility-wise. So the amount of effort that goes into these visits uh, is a lot. Uh, but our guys really do make it easy. And I think that, you know, talking with the families of these recruits that we brought in, in particular, ones that committed to us, um, they really appreciate that effort. It just it seems more personal, and, and that's something that we're going to continue to do in the future because uh, we're able to really do a, a detailed job of, of selling our university and our community. And um, today it paid off because we, we were able to get some quality football players, students, people into our program. <clears throat> I also want to talk a little bit. We've, we've got some changes that have occurred with our coaching staff that we're really excited about. Um, and I want to go through uh, who, who our coaches are. Um, our new offensive coordinator, Tristan Spear, also going to be coaching our, our quarterbacks. Uh, really excited about uh, Tristan joining our staff. Uh, Walker Ashburn is, continues to be our defensive coordinator. He coaches our D-line and strength and conditioning as well. Dallas Pruitt is our offensive line coach, recruiting coordinator, and he also handles football operations. Dallas did a tremendous job with the recruiting effort um, this cycle and, and, and extremely proud of everything that he's done and the effort that he's put in. Uh, Steve Wright uh, has taken um, uh, the title of assistant head coach. He, he also does our academic uh, liaison, defensive back coach. Um, Trey Williams uh, coaching our linebackers, and he'll also take over uh, the special teams coordinator. Um, Jackson Bray uh, with tight ends coach. He handled our social media, and I'll talk about Jackson here in a second. Luan Latson uh, will continue to be our wide receiver coach. Uh, we've added uh, a new defensive graduate assistant, Trent Ellis. Um, Trent comes to us 
uh, from Alabama, played at Arkansas State. Uh, he'll be working with, with Coach Walker on the defensive line. And then Hunter Grimes uh, will come on as our offensive graduate assistant. Um, and uh, Hunter played for us uh, last year, graduated, excited about Hunter being here. Uh, but I do want to talk specifically, uh, Ryan Lusby uh, left and, and, and took another job and forever grateful to Ryan. Um, uh, he's a good friend, uh, a good coach, and I'm excited about the opportunity he has with his new job. Um, Jack Hendershot uh, was a GA for us last year. Um, just got a job at North Little Rock High School. Extremely excited for Jack. Uh, he was a great player for us, and he did a tremendous job for us. His graduate assistant, North Little Rock, got they, they got a they got a good one in, in Jack, and really excited about him and his future. And then I'm going to announce uh, today that that uh, Jackson Bray will be leaving us for another job uh, as an offensive line coach, uh, Cumberland College. He's going to be going up there uh, with Josh Qualls, who's the offensive coordinator there, and. Jackson's going to be taking uh, that job here uh, after today. Um, going to miss all these guys uh, tremendously. Jackson, uh, in particular, uh, played offensive line here for us. Comes from a great family. You know, we don't we don't get too many uh, guys from Northwest Arkansas, but when we do, we're very very excited. I actually, signed one today. Uh, but Jackson Bray is a, a tremendous human being. Uh, this is going to be a tough one to lose because he is all about UAM. Uh, he bought into UAM as, as a football player and um, comes from a great family, and, and we wish him nothing uh, but the best. Uh, but we feel like this staff that we have is a great one. These guys work extremely hard. They do a tremendous job of getting good quality people to come to our university, and we're, we're, we're just very, very grateful uh, f uh, for them. Um, obviously, I want to thank uh, my wife, Patricia, uh, and I want to, I, I guess I'll speak on behalf of all the coaches with, with their spouses, but uh, I want to thank Patricia in particular because she definitely has to put up with a lot, and uh, I'm, I'm forever grateful for her patience uh, to deal with me because uh, I know sometimes that can be tough, uh, but I, I love her and I appreciate her and, and my entire family. Um, and I do want to thank the other coaches' wives uh, as well um, because it's, it's a sacrifice, and they, they're all just – just great, and, and I'm very, very appreciative of that. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Peggy Doss, a chancellor. Uh, she has been a true supporter uh, of us here in all of athletics um, uh, and, and football and, and every sport, but um, I'm grateful for, for Dr. Doss and her support and the things that she's doing to help us to get better, and that's, that's a big thing. Uh, a couple other people I want to thank, uh, Hampton Inn and Rays, uh, for their help during our recruiting process. Got to give a, a big shout out to our, our UAM athletic department, um, Gary Anna Pace, Katie Lusby, Justin Wagner, Ryan Tao, uh, all the other coaches within the athletic department um, doing both jobs as head coach and athletic director. Uh, if I didn't have all these people uh, pulling the rope in the same direction, I, I think we'd be, we'd be having a problem. But it's, it's just an awesome feeling knowing that you have – head coaches of other sports that are just really supportive uh, and, and uh, helping make this process to go smooth. And, and my, my staff there at the athletic department, uh, to you guys, I thank you for everything that you do uh, and everything you're going to continue to do. Uh, but uh, we're excited uh, in the direction that we're heading with athletics and our football program. Um, so the way we'll do it now is uh, we will go through each one of our signees um, it'll be in the form of a, a PowerPoint presentation. We'll talk a little bit about each. Um, in this presentation, uh, you'll see that there'll be a breakdown uh, regionally of where we signed our players from, uh, also by position. Um, and so you'll be able to see all that uh, and, and give you a little bit of information on, on each one of our athletes. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and, trans, and transition into uh, the part of, of talking about uh, all our new bowl weevils. Um, so we'll, we'll enter, enter into that, and then uh, I'll come back at the end with some closing remarks. First up, we have Carson Berg, offensive lineman, 6'2", 280 pounds, from the Woodlands College Park in Houston, Texas. 
2022 second team all district, 2022 academic all district. Next up, we have Bain Brinkman, defensive lineman, 6'2", 250 pounds, Spring Hill High School, two-time all district, offensive line and defensive line, and academic all district. Uh, Bain also took the title of best name of the signing class. Next up is Caden Brooks, a linebacker, six foot, 190 pounds, Longview High School, first team all district, another representative from the great state of Texas. Next up, we have Ethan Burt, He's defensive back, 6'1", 175, from Highland Park High School out of Texas. He was a 2020 team, second team all district cornerback. Next up, we have Glenn Cage, uh, nickname is Protein. Second for the best name of the signing class. He's a running back, 5'9", 200 pounds from Central High School out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was a 2022 first team all district, 2021 second team uh, all district. And he's also this year um, the Warwick Dunn Award finalist. Next up is Chris Campbell, defensive lineman, 6'1", 265 from Grand Prairie High School. Three-time all district first team, um, also a two-time second team all district during his time in high school. Next up, Trey Carter, wide receiver, 5'8", 165 from Huntington High School in Shreveport, Louisiana. He's 2022 first team all district, 2021 first team all district. He was a second team all state. Uh, and in 2020, he was a first team all district as well. Next up, we have Jack Chasson. He's an offensive lineman, 6'5", 260 pounds from South Lafouche High School. He was a 2022 first team all district, 2021 second team all district. He also has a twin brother that is going to culinary school and hopefully he'll come in and do some of our pregame meals. Next up, Taylor Collins, defensive back, 5'11", 175 pounds from Allen High School in Allen, Texas. 2022 second team all district at the safety position. Next up, John Trey Cummings, linebacker, 5'11", 200 pounds from West Feliciana High School from St. Francisville, Louisiana. He was a 2021 and 22 all district. Next up is Dylan Duhon. He's a kicker, punter, 5'9", 190. From Erath, Dylan also played a little defensive line, but he's going to be a kicker for us here at UAM. Uh, 2022 first-team all-district kicker, second-team all-district punter. Uh, he was also first-team all-district in 2021. Next up, Gray Falk, tight end, 6'4", 210 from Notre Dame Crowley High School in Crowley, Louisiana. Plays for the great Louis Cook. Uh, 2022 first-team all-parish, also first-team all-district. Hunter Farrell, quarterback, 6'3", 195 from Boxite High School here in Arkansas, four-time All-Conference, two-time All-State. Hunter's coming off a pretty devastating injury he got this past year, but we're looking forward to him doing great things and, and, and continue his recovery here with us. Next up, we have Adam Floyd, linebacker, 6 foot, 200 pounds, Baldwin High School, Mississippi, two-time first-team All-State, two-time first-team All-Division. Next up, Noah Galley. He's an athlete, 6'3", 175 from Mayflower High School here in Arkansas. Uh, he was a 2021-22 Faulkner, Faulkner County uh, Player of the Year finalist. Uh, played quarterback for him at Mayflower, uh, but it's going to be probably to the tight end wide receiver position. We're excited about Noah. Next up, Jalen Gillard, defensive back, 6'175 from East Jefferson High School down in New Orleans, Louisiana. Two-time all uh, Two-time All-District first team and four-year letter um, for East Jeff. Torrin Jackson, defensive back, 5'8", 160 from Watson Chapel here in Arkansas. Team captain, three-year varsity starter. Really excited about Torrin staying close to home to be part of, a, uh, of the Weevil football team. Cam Jefferson, wide receiver, 5'10", 180 from Airline High School in Shreveport. Two-time first team All-District, first team All-Parish in 2022. Also played in the I-20 All-Star. Bowl. Next up, Brandon Johnson, linebacker, six foot two oh five from Bryan High School here in Arkansas. Part of 2022 state champion, but also part of some other state championships during his time there at Bryant. Plays for the great Buck James, used to be a bowl wheel himself. We're excited about having Brandon here. Arius Jones, a defensive back, six foot one seventy from Sherman High School in Sherman, Texas. Two time second team all district, was a varsity 
starter for the past two years. Slade LeBlanc, athlete, six foot two ten from Belton High School in, in Belton, Texas, uh, 2021. Uh, second team all district 2022 first team all district and 2022 second team all region uh, me and Slade's father played together at McNeese a long time ago Ahmad Lewis linebacker six foot 220 from Madison Prep Academy in Baton Rouge Louisiana 2022 second team all district and 2020 they won a state championship Andre McMerchant offensive lineman 6'5 275 from General Trask High School in North Louisiana 2022 first team all district and in 2021 he was second team all district next up we have Caden Middleton quarterback 6'3 210 from Cedar Creek High School in Ruston Louisiana Caden's father Matt was our offensive coordinator here back in 2011 for a couple years good friend two-time first team all district two-time first team all parish he also was the MVP of the Louisiana Army National Guard Bowl Excited about having Peanut on part of the Weevils. Next up, John Marcus Porter, defensive back, 6'3", 185 from Lakeside High School. Played for a former player of ours, Alex Black. 2022, second team all-conference. Just a great athlete. We're excited about him staying close to home to be part of UAM. Next up, Carter Sanders, offensive line, 6'2", 270 from Benton High School. 2022, first team all-conference. 2022 second team all state. Carter's going to be a huge part of our football team and our community. Next up, DeAndre Sandals, linebacker 6'1, 205 from Mejia High School in Texas, three time all district on defense. 2021, he was a first team all district running back. Going to play linebacker for us here. Next up, Austin Sotomayor, offensive lineman 6'8, 320, Keenwood High School. He was a 2022 All-District Honorable Mention. Really excited about Austin being part of our football program. Next up, Cooper Spradlin, offensive line, 6'5", 295 from Hoxie High School. Played for the great Tom Sears and Cole Sears and Austin Williams. All got ties to UAM. Cooper was a 2022 second-team All-State. Also was... Considered an SB Live 2022 top offensive lineman. Next up, we have Eli Stewart, defensive lineman, 6'3", 235 from Whitehall High School here in Arkansas. First team, all-conference, three-time player of the week. Next up, we have Trey Stokes, linebacker, 6'1", 200 pounds, from Vanguard High School in Florida. Defensive player of the year, 2020 and 21. 22 is also the first team all-county. Austin Wadsworth, the quarterback, 6'4", 175 from Pearl River High School in Louisiana. He was district offensive MVP, first team all district. Royal Williams, wide receiver, 5'9", 165 from Ellender High School down in South Louisiana. Played for one of our former players, Jamal Nixon, 2022 first team all district region. Also, honorable mention, all state. 2021, he was also first team all district. Next up, Datreon Woodfork. Linebacker, 6'2", 185 from Springdale High School in Springdale, Arkansas. Love it when we get some North, Northwest Arkansas players here, and we're excited about day. He was a 2021 Offensive Player of the Year, 2022 Northwest Radio Dream Team, and he was also second team all-conference this past year. Next up, we have James Young, defensive line, 6'4", 245 from Bonneville High School down in New Orleans, 2022 first team all-district. As you just heard, we feel like we have signed a tremendous class, 2023. All these young men fit what we're trying to accomplish here at UAM. Um, I know that they're excited uh, after talking to them today. Uh, after they signed with us, you can just hear in their voice that they're ready to be part uh, of what we're continually trying to build. And that's going to be really, really good for us. Um, because when you're out recruiting, obviously you want to try to find good football players, but you have to find the, the really good student athletes as well and, and, and good people that are going to be helpful in us to, to build our community relations because that's a big part of what we do here as well. So very, very excited about this class. Um, these guys uh, realize that 
Just because they signed today doesn't mean they get to take a break. They realize that they got to get themselves ready to be here in the fall and because uh, playing college football um, takes a lot of work and, and these young men are ready to go. Uh, I do want to say a, a, a couple things uh, before we close uh, with our conference is that, you know, back in, in December we signed a, a group of young men uh, that joined us this semester, uh, our mid-year signees. Uh, you know, when we were going out to, to find uh, mid-year guys, we had specific needs, and I think we accomplished that very well. Um, offensive line, defensive line were some, some big needs that we needed to try to get some more uh, depth and guys that would come in and compete for, for jobs, uh, and I think we, we've done that. And, and they have hit the ground running. You know, we started uh, school back in uh, January 11th, 12th, started working, working out, you know, right after the next day. Um, and, and for some, it might have been a little bit of a culture shock. Uh, but the things that we're trying to establish uh, this semester in the off season um, is very, very defined. Um, we realized that the season last year uh, didn't end up like we wanted it to. Um, but we're not making excuses. We're only trying to find solutions to the problems. Uh, and those guys that we signed uh, back in December are going to help us uh, with that. So. We're excited about them. I will say this about the guys that we have here on our roster. Uh, we've got 93 guys on our roster right now this spring. That's the most we've ever had uh, at one time. You know, last year we only had six seniors. Um, and going into that last game, I think we had uh, one that was actually playing for us. The others were injured. Um, but, you know, we knew that we had to do some things to try to, to, to get better. Uh, and, and one of those things was changing the mindset this offseason of how we were going to attack the weight room, the conditioning, and the nutrition part of it. We've been very, very fortunate to have some people that have supported us ever since we built our nutrition center here, and we've gone to a whole nother level. We hired a nutritionist to come in. Each one of our players have their own nutrition plan that they're going to follow, and we're going to see, and we've already seen, uh, some improvement from a majority of our guys. There's specific things that they have to do, uh, uh, whether it's the supplements, what they're eating, how they're eating, how much they're eating. Um, us establishing, establishing the guidelines of, you know, what you eat and how you eat definitely affect how you can recover from an injury or workouts. Uh, so we're really, really excited about what we're doing there. Coach Walker has done a tremendous job in the strength and conditioning part of it. Uh, and implementing different things to try to keep um, the, the recovery part of it, you know, to a minimal. And we're excited. I can't, I can't tell you enough. I know I keep talking about it, but I think it's going to be something that's going to help us to, uh, to get better uh, and, and to be able to bounce back. And, and so we're, we're looking forward to a lot of positive things coming uh, from that. But as, as a team all together, uh, this football team is a special football team. We have a great group of young men that are on our roster right now with these new signees, it's just going to make it better. Um, it could have been real easy for some of our guys to say, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this, but we got guys that continually to fight. I tell people all the time that, look, uh, at UAM, I think it takes a different breed of cat to play here. Uh, I, I think it takes a person that truly loves the game of football. Uh, we're never going to use something uh, that, that we don't have because we love everything that we have. Uh, I talked to you earlier about Dr. Dawson, the things that she – continues to try to do to help us improve. Uh, but our guys work hard, and they're bought in. And the culture that we continue to build here uh, is one of commitment, uh, of one of trying to get ourselves ready to be in the talk for championship, uh, conference championship. And, and that's something we shoot for every year. Uh, and, and, and our guys are prepared and looking forward to uh, finishing this offseason off and moving into spring ball uh, which we're really excited uh, about as well. And I want to give you a couple things uh, in dealing with our spring, spring practice. Uh, we're going to start spring practice this year on March the 8th, um, and it's going to run all the way through April 13th, which is going to be our spring game. That's going to be a Thursday night. Uh, we'll have our spring, here at, spring game here at our football stadium. Um, a couple other things that, that I want to remind as well, um, we have one of our bigger fundraisers, uh, that we've been having in place now, I guess, 10 years uh, in McGee. Um, it's, it's, it's our annual auction. We have some really, really great items. This is, a, this is huge, not only for football, but for all of our sports. 
Um, as you know, uh, we're in the middle of building uh, a, a new performance center that's going to have a new weight room and training room in it. And, and we have raised over a million dollars, and, and uh, we're right around a quarter of a million dollars difference right now, and, and we're looking for help. We're, we're, we're in the process. It's starting. And, uh, you know, there's things been ordered, and we're fixing to start the, the building part of it. Um, it's obviously going to be housed uh, in where the old swimming pool uh, was located. Uh, and uh, that fundraiser that we have on February 24th in McGee is a, is a big deal for us. That allows uh, all of our athletic programs to give back and give to this project. Uh, and and this, is, this is the first of, of many to come. Uh, we realize that people who have given in the past want to see something uh, change in regards to facility-wise, and, and this is, this is going to be a big one because not only is football going to be able to benefit from this new performance center, but all of our sports are going to benefit. Um, and, and that part of it gets us excited here uh, because we're, we know we're making steps in the right direction, and it's going to be huge for our football program, uh, and I can't wait to uh, be able to get our entire team in there to, to lift weights and um, together, and I think that's just tremendous for our chemistry. So uh, if you have some free time on February 24th, love to see you in McGee. Uh, it's a great time, and it's for a, a great cause. Uh, lastly, uh, I, I want to say that uh, I am extremely blessed, have always felt that way, to be the head coach here at UAM. Um, I'm also extremely blessed to be the athletic director. Um, but my goal uh, as a football coach is to compete for a conference championship. That's what we try to do every year, something we're going to continue to try to do. Uh, these, these kids deserve to be in that talk, um, and we're going to continue to grow and, 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 and get better uh, in the areas that we need to get better. Uh, but there's, there's, no, there's no better place than UAM. This is a special place. Uh, the people that we have working here realize that. The coaches that we have here believe in it. Our players are working hard to be the best that they can be. Uh, I wouldn't trade anybody uh, for any of our players. Our players are, are special. Uh, they work extremely hard, and I'm just so grateful to be part of that. Uh, we want that support to continue here at UAM with these new guys coming in. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be coming from different places, and they, they always want to be welcomed and feel welcomed. And, and, and the community of Monticello, Southeast Arkansas, always has open arms for these young young men that are, that are coming in uh, to a new part of their life. Uh, so, um, again, I am grateful. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to you today about these, these young men that we've signed that are now going to be bowl weevils, uh, and we cannot wait uh, to start spring ball uh, to get ourselves ready to go for the fall. So, uh, thank you so much for joining us today uh, for our national signing day 2023 uh, for UAM football. Uh, I hope that everybody stays safe with this weather that we're, we're experiencing right now. Um, but again, UAM is a great place. There's no better place. We love it here, and uh, we really appreciate everybody's support. Eat them up. <laughs>